This U.S. destroyer can be divided into several parts. At the front is the bow, or some might call this the stem, followed by the forecastle, and the most important part, the bridge. Moving inside, this serves as the primary command and control center for the ship. It offers an almost 360-degree field of view and spans almost two stories in height and is manned by staff 24 hours a day. Just below the bridge are the meeting and dining rooms. Due to the compact nature of this destroyer's, the living quarters for the 300 crew members are quite cramped at this level. Moving further back, there are four turbines, diesel engines, and electrical generators connected to a double shaft propeller. As these are diesel generators, the exhaust is directed through two funnels located here and intentionally designed to reduce heat and radar signature of the ship. When speaking of Navy ships and military strategy, you can command and control these 21st century technological marvels with Conflict of Nations World War III. It's a free online PvP strategy game for mobile and PC, where you can represent any country of your choice alongside 128 other players in real-time games. What I appreciate most about the game is its over 100 beautifully 3D-modeled weapon systems such as nuclear ballistic submarines, combat attack helicopters, stealth strike fighters, airborne infantry units, and many more. You can choose to declare war on your neighbors or form alliances with other players, but wait, we have special offer for our viewers, so click on the link in the description or scan the code here to receive 13,000 gold and a one-month premium subscription for free. But this offer is only available for 30 days, so please hurry up. As the name suggests, Destroyer is equipped to carry around 90 missiles with this vertical launching system, a Mark 45 deck gun position at the front, followed by close combat phalanx and a CRAM missile system. But that's not all. It also houses Harpoon anti-ship missiles and torpedo tubes for threats underneath. And if that's not enough, there's a submarine hunter killer Seahawk equipped with sonar and torpedoes featured in the upcoming video. So stay tuned and don't miss a beat. Now let's begin our exploration from the front. Similar to the British warships, this system boasts a Mark 45 gun and ammunition handling system. This sophisticated system can be compartmentalized into four distinct parts. Starting at the base is the Automated Ammunition Shuttle. Just above it, we encounter the Automated Ammunition Handling System, showcasing advanced technology and precision engineering. Progressing forward, the next component is the 20-round Loader Drum, a crucial element in the seamless operation of the system. Positioned just above the Loader Drum is the Gun Shield, providing essential protection and stability to the entire setup. This is how it works. Step one, the ammunition shuttle travels towards the lower ammunition hoist. Step two, the ammunition hoist lifts the shell toward the 20 round loader. Step three, a tray that carries both the shell and the propellant turns 90 degrees and pushes them into the gun barrel. Step four, when ready, the gun fires. Together, these four integral components form a seamlessly integrated system that can spit out 10 to 16 rounds per minute. Step 5. The shell case ejector, a vital mechanism, efficiently expels spent shell cases after each firing of the powerful 127mm gun through this side of the weapon. Additionally, the shell can travel to around 24 kilometers, which translates to around 14 miles from the US destroyer towards the enemy target. Moving to the top is the Missile Launcher Unit. It has the capacity to carry more than 90 missiles achieved through the utilization of the Mark 41 Vertical Launching System. This unit measures approximately 25 feet in length. Placing it in front of a person provides a tangible sense of its size. Now let's delve into how the Hot Launch System operates through super simple basic animations. The VLS door cell opens for the missile. As the missile ignites, the exhaust gases are directed upwards through a designated vent, as shown in this visualization. This design enables the missile to launch independently, free from any gases. Let's now take a closer look inside the missile. This is the standard missile or SM-6. At the front is the guidance section, and just behind it is the autopilot or battery section. A quick reminder, this is a two-stage missile. The first stage consists of a solid rocket booster or sustainer which separates from the missile when it finished its job. The second stage then activates, thrusting the missile to a range of Mach 3.5, equivalent to around 2,664 miles per hour. This missile stands at a height of 6.6 .6 meters, 
translating to around 21 feet. To provide some perspective, comparing this to a person will help you understand its size. Interestingly, this missile weighs a staggering 1,500 kilograms converting to empirical unit. It is around 3,306 pounds. That was the first layer of defense. The second layer involves a close-in weapon system, such as the phalanx. At the top is the KU Bands Search Radar. Just below it is the KU Band Tracking and Gun Laying Radar. And further below is the 20mm Gatling gun that spits out 4,500 rounds per minute. All these rounds are fed from an ammunition drum and lineless feed. Let's take a closer look at how this works. When the phalanx is activated, the search radar acquires an inbound drone threat at a distance of 10 miles. The search radar continues tracking and the software confirms the threat. The fire control radar then locks onto a target at 5 miles, approximately 2 miles away or at the optimal range assigned by the software, the gun opens fire on threat 1 and continues firing until a hard or soft kill is achieved by expelling tons of almost endless rounds, destroying any drones, boat and planes that come near the ship. If that doesn't work in small targets, then this is another close-in weapon system, the CRAM. If the preceding method proves ineffective against small targets, another close-in weapon system, the CRAM, comes into play. The CRAM integrates the radar and electro-optical system, the phalanx, but this bad boy alone packs an 11-cell RAM launcher that can be reloaded, thus creating an autonomous system that can engage threats without relying on external information. Within the CRAM is the RIM-116 rolling airframe missile equipped with an infrared homing device. This small, lightweight infrared homing surface-to-air missile is specifically designed for engaging subsonic missile, such as the Soviet-era P-15 re-engineered by Iran, which maneuvers in close proximity to the oceans to evade radar. The CRAM defense system activates in such scenarios, destroying anything within a 6-mile radius with a 90% hit accuracy. In today's Navy, there exist three distinct types of surface warships, the frigate, the destroyer, and the cruiser. But what sets them apart? The frigate, being the smallest of the trio, carries fewer weapons and less sophisticated electronic sensors than its larger counterparts, the destroyer and cruiser. On the other hand, cruisers play a pivotal role as the shield of the fleet. They surpass destroyers in size, accommodating additional command and control facilities, enhancing their strategic capabilities. Position between the frigate and cruiser, destroyers stand out for their impressive speed. Measuring 505 feet in length, equivalent to 153.92 meters, and boasting a breadth of approximately 59 feet or 18 meters. To help us understand its size better, a destroyer can be visualized as spanning around six tennis courts stacked opposite each other. Even better, this is how it looks like when it is stationed against an aircraft carrier. As you can see, the destroyer sits pretty low compared to other warship. In other words, it looks pretty lean and mean. Moreover, these vessels weigh a staggering 9,000 long tons, nearly equivalent to the combined weight of 900 school buses. But all this added weight requires an engine and not just one, but four gas turbine engines for propulsion. Like most modern US surface combatants, DDG-51 utilizes gas turbines. These four General Electric 2,500 gas turbines located at the base produce a total of 100,000 shaft horsepower via a dual shaft design and are capable of achieving speeds of 30 plus knots in open seas. Moving to the back are the electric motors and diesel generators, all of which are connected to the huge gears that turn the propeller. Interestingly, these propellers can thrust the ship forward and even engage a reverse gear to slow down the ship. So how does the rudder turn the ship? When the rudder is moved to an angle around the ship's center of gravity, it slightly changes the ship's orientation by giving it a drift angle, thus altering the ship's course. Moving further, this is the Harpoon missile. It's an anti-ship cruise missile that has been in service since 1977. Let me explain how it works. When launched, it flies a few meters above the sea, following a parabolic path that brings it close to the water's surface. This trajectory is chosen to evade radar detection and counter anti-aircraft guns or missiles, enabling it to strike its target with its 227-kilogram blast warhead, delivering lethal firepower capable of sinking or damaging various ships. However, the threat does not solely come from above, it also lurks beneath the ocean's surface. 
Enter the Mark 32 standard anti-submarine torpedo launching systems. Once a target is detected, they can be directed to desired locations. When launched, the torpedo dives deep into the ocean, utilizing both passive and active sonar to detect submarines. Emitting a ping that bounces back, the internal sonar identifies a target and locks onto it. For a submarine, this poses a significant threat as the warhead carried by the weapon is highly explosive, weighing 43.9 kilograms, which is around 95 pounds, capable of inflicting substantial damage when detonated. Just beneath the ship's hull lies the surface ship sonar, equipped with both active and passive capabilities designed to effectively track submarines. As a point of reference, this technology mirrors the passive sonar found on the Virginia class, positioned at the forefront of the submarine's nose. But here are the basic difference between active and passive sonar. Active sonar operates by emitting pings from the ship to detect any objects within its range. This method provides a high level of accuracy in target detection, but it also has the drawback of revealing the precise location of the ship emitting the signals. In contrast, the passive sonar employed in the Virginia class relies on detecting the inherent noises generated by all ships and submarines. At the back of the ship is a landing deck for the Seahawk. This is based on the famous Black Hawk design but re-engineered for Navy use. It can be armed with Hellfire missiles, suitable for targeting both land-based and surface ocean threats. Additionally, as its name suggests, the Seahawk can be equipped with underwater torpedoes. Here's how it operates. A sonar line is deployed to scan for enemy submarines underneath the ocean water. Upon detection, the helicopter can launch a torpedo at the target. Once launched, the torpedo, equipped with its own sonar system, will actively track and pursue the submarine until it successfully neutralizes the threat. Don't forget to check out today's sponsor, Conflict of Nation World War III. It's a great game that is completely free to play and you'd be helping out the channel by doing so. Click my link in the description below and get 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free.